Hey, this is Sorry with Mythic MTG Tech here, and I am here with Kyle Nash from MainPhaseMTG.net. He is doing another awesome Commander deck tech for us today with Volrath the Fallen. Let's jump right into this. Who is Volrath, and how do you make him awesome for a fun, casual Commander deck? Brian, thanks for having me on again. I'm actually here with Volrath. Uh, Volrath is a is a contrasting commander in my in my backpack. He is my he is my fun and somewhat casual commander. Uh, Volrath is uh, by heart a Voltron commander, so that's how we want to build him. He's a Voltron commander. Uh, I think to understand that, I should probably read the card for everybody out there. Uh, uh, Volrath is three black, black, black for a legendary creature. Of course, he's a six four off the bat, but he has the activated ability of one and a black, and discard a creature card from your hand. Volrath the Fallen gets plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the discarded card's mana cost. So the idea here is to fill your hand with big creatures with big converted mana costs, pitch them to Volrath, and swing for 21 commander damage. What is the best card to discard to Volrath? I'm really glad you asked that one. Uh, the best card I have in the deck for that is Draco. Draco is a 16 converted mana cost, that's 16 colorless mana, uh, artifact creature dragon, uh, and it's a it's got a 9-9 body, but I tell you what, if you're casting Draco, you're doing it wrong, because Draco is meant to be cast to drop to Volrath, it'll give Volrath plus 16, plus 16, meaning he's going to be a 22-20 uh, swinging in, and that'll that'll one so shot one one shot people out there, that that's is the just idea. incredible. Yeah, so you've got a six casting cost commander. Mm -hmm. How do you get that guy out? What does really the ramp look like, and what is the best ramp that you've, or your favorite ramp that's in this deck? Okay, well, we have a we have a fair mix of casual and competitive ramp in here. Uh, I think on the competitive side, we have Ancient Tomb. A uh, little expensive, but it's one of my favorite ramp spells. It comes on a land. It's it's the best kind of it's the best kind of ramp you can get. Uh, we have Cage Sun in here. It's uh, commander favorite. Definitely a staple in here for for big uh, for big decks that want to go and cast big creatures. Cage Sun is definitely the way to do it. Um, and then on the uh, a little bit of the casual side, or at least on the uh, on the budget side, we have Crypt Ghast in here to add some to add some black mana to our mana pool. Uh, wonderful creature. It's got Extort on it. Uh, inexpensive, and it says whenever you tap a swamp for mana. Add black to your mana pool, so it doubles it doubles uh, swamps mana production on here. Uh, but basically, standard fair ramp everywhere else. Uh, we got Soul Ring, Temple of the False God, uh, and then I would say probably my favorite my favorite ramp in the deck is going to be Lake of the Dead. Again, another one of those uh, another one of those land. Got a couple triggers that you got to watch out for here. Uh, you need to sacrifice a swamp when it comes into play, or you have to sacrifice it, of course. Uh, it can tap for black mana right away. It comes in untapped. But you can also tap it, sacrifice a swamp, and add black, 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 black. That's four black to your mana pool. So uh, it, it works really well mid-game mid to late game when you want to pump out big creatures or throw a lot of things to Volrath. Uh, you got to watch out with it early game, though, because you end up eating all your swamps and all your mana, and then you're just left with Lake of the Dead. No, a great card. Uh, you've also got Shrine to Nykthos in here, which is one of yep, my yep. absolute favorites, especially when you've got a commander that's got three devotion. Right. This is one of my speculations right here. I'm, I'm holding on. To, I got a, I got like a sheet of Nykthos in my binder, and I'm holding on to them. They're they're gonna they're gonna go up. I, I know it. I can I can feel it. They're gonna spike one day. And yeah. solid yeah. modern yeah. card, fun in the yeah. mono green oh, ramp yeah. deck. A great yeah. card overall. Commander staple for mm -hmm. long time into the future. Mm -hmm. Um, so, as you're pitching cards to your commander, looks like you've got a wonderful recursion theme here. Um, what are some of your favorite targets for recursion? How early can you get them out in this deck? Okay, yeah, this deck, uh, not often, but uh, sometimes we can we can put a we can put a Shouldred or it that betrays onto the battlefield turn two or three. That is. Yeah, it's devastating. Uh, Shouldred will will shut down the board really quick. Uh, those are two of my favorite early game targets uh, for something like a Buried Alive or an Entomb, uh, and then just to bring them back really quickly with an Exhum or Animate Dead. Uh, those are my favorite graveyard targets uh, to hit with this deck. Um, but again, like you know, like Volrath has on them, we we any big fatty we put in there that doesn't shuffle into the library is going to be a great target regardless. What does your evasion package look like? 
Okay, uh, we have a pretty much standard fare of Voltron package in here. Uh, we have uh, Fleet Feather Sandals, which is, I wouldn't say standard, but definitely one of my favorite cards. Uh, it's a it's an equipment from Theros. Uh, two to cast, two to equip, and it says equipped creature has flying in haste. So wonderful evasion, wonderful uh, wonderful hastiness uh, in, in a Voltron package here. Otherwise, we have Rogue's Passage, a couple of the swords in common in common removal colors for that for that added protection and stuff. Uh, we have uh, Whisper Silk Cloak, and we have two unfamiliar things in here. We have uh, Dothy Trapper, which is definitely one of my pet cards. It says. <laughs> I'll read it out and then I'll translate it for for the layman's here. It says tap target creature gains shadow until the end of turn. Basically what that should read is tap target creature is unblockable and can't block till the end of turn. Shadow is one of those really old mechanics that have gone by the wayside far from evergreen. Uh, shadow says this creature can block or be blocked by only creatures with shadow. It's like a more restrictive flying. Is Crazy it, ability. Wonderful for getting through commander damage. I really like that card in this deck. Sure. Um, a little bit of draw in here. Um, Damnable pack, yeah. greed, Phyrexian arena. I mean, the arena plays so well with Shrine to Nick throws. Um, read the bones. Mm -hmm. Some good stuff here. Um, you've got an ooze package. Could you talk about necrotic ooze, how it works, and what this package is to do crazy stuff? Absolutely. Uh, necrotic ooze is is in here as kind of like an alternate win con, or really what it what it'll do is it'll slow down it'll slow down the match significantly uh, by basically exiling everybody's creatures, and it works. In a, in a particular way, it's a three-card combo with Necrotic Ooze being on the battlefield and two other cards being in the graveyard. should uh, probably read Necrotic Ooze for everybody here. It's a two black black for a 4-3 creature Ooze. Nothing real special there. It's a little below the curve. But it says, and this is where it's crazy, as long as Necrotic Ooze is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all creatures in all graveyards. So it's 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 super broken. It does everything that everything in the yard does. Uh, so we we like to target uh, particularly two things to throw into the yard when we have a necrotic ooze in hand around the battlefield, and that is Cinder Haze Wretch and Shaku Endbringer. Shaku Endbringer, uh, besides its other you know uh, you know other keywords and stuff, will reads tap remove target creature from the game, or I should say exile target creature, and put a plus one, plus one counter on Shaku Endbringer. Replace Shaku Endbringer with Necrotic Ooze, and, and you'll see what's happening next with Cinderhaze Wretch. Cinderhaze Wretch reads, put a negative one, negative one counter on Cinderhaze, uh, on Cinderhaze Wretch, untap it. So basically what that translates to is Necrotic Ooze gets both of those abilities that I just detailed. You can tap, exile a creature, untap it. Tap, untap, tap, untap, and uh, there goes everybody's creatures in an exile effect too, not just a uh, not just a throw into the yard again. So, how do you get these combo pieces? What are the tutors that you've got here? Okay, uh, no problem. So we got a couple. Uh, we have very standard fair black tutors: demonic tutor, diabolic tutor, and a little bit more expensive vampiric tutor. Uh, as well as putting things into the yard, we have buried alive and entomb. Uh, we love to grab those. Uh, Buried Alive is my favorite, my favorite commander graveyard spell. Costs more than Entomb. It's not as explosive, but putting three creatures in the yard yeah, incredible is, in this is so particular good. deck. So um, sure. Let's look at a little bit of the utility lands that you've got here. Sure. Um, you've got Hull of the Bandit Lord. Very very nice way to get your commander out and. Um, give it haste so that you can win in a single turn. And then Volrath Stronghold, such an incredible card. Could you talk about that one a little bit and what you end up putting back on top of your deck? Sure, sure, absolutely. So Volrath Stronghold uh, comes into play untapped. And you could, it, I think the mark of a great utility land is one that comes in untapped and you can start using it for mana, and then it has a really relevant ability on it for, for later. Uh, its other ability is one in a black tap, and it says put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. It's so good. Uh, in this deck, we love to we love to put Draco into the yard and do that every single turn. We like to put Draco back on top of the library, 
throw it down to Volrath again, uh, kill someone with commander damage, do it again next turn, do it again next turn. That that gives us a three turn clock to win the match, uh, usually in a in a multiplayer game. Uh, otherwise, it's it's bringing back your artisan of Kozilek and putting that on there, generating value. You know, so you've got a Voltron you can, package here. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, what do you like out of this Voltron package? Mm -hmm. Why did you put these particular cards in here? Uh, we have in here uh, Fire Shrieker, which is just super good on Volrath because it basically takes uh, any of the creatures uh, that that isn't Draco and making Volrath uh, one hit kill. Uh, otherwise, uh, it spoke briefly about the swords and the the evasion. Yeah, you're really dealing with the major that, spot removal uh, here, well. um, mm -hmm. with sort of feast and famine, and then sort of light and shadow, and then light and shadow brings those creatures back from your graveyard, puts them in your hand, so you can drop them again. Real nice synergy going on there. Yep. So, um, so you've got some board wipes in here. Um, you've got mm -hmm. two of my favorite, uh, damnation and toxic deluge. Uh, which of those do you like better, and why? Deluge, hands down, because it gets around indestructible. Yep, it just it just gets around indestructible, and it's really efficiently costed. Uh, you get people. This thing can come out early, it can come out late, and it's relevant no matter when you want to. It's play even it. hopeless for that angel of hope there, and just so good. Um, all is dust. Another very very nice one here. Black Sun Zenith, mm -hmm. and then Death Bringer Regent for a. Um, casual card this is awesome um, the ability to basically board wipe and only be left with this usually people have five or more creatures on the board very very solid here um, anything else that you'd like to cover in this deck I think um, as far as uh, as far as value is concerned from the deck uh, as far as uh, value creatures and target uh, creatures that you want to go and, and pull out I think uh, one of the one of the best creatures to pull out in the deck is going to be Shriek Maw. The deck itself is lacking in target removal as, as, as you know if you're looking at the tap down and stuff like that you can see it, it doesn't have any target removal but there's so many ways to recur a Shriek Maw out of the graveyard it becomes a Doom no, Blade Excellent, times excellent card. Wonderful commander staple. Um, we've got a link to the tapped out list in the about um, area here. Definitely check it out. Um, so if people want to see more of your content, where would they find you? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the new site that you have co-founded? It's mainphasemtg.net. Come, uh, come out there, check it out to see uh, a lot of really great modern content. Uh, we have right now pretty much an exclusive modern tier list. So if you're looking for that edge up to see just exactly where Death Shadows is, spoiler alert, it's at the top. Um, <laughs> Uh, or if you want to, uh, if you want to see some really engaging commander content, uh, we're really dedicated to not only uh, the the competitive side of Magic, but we're also really dedicated to the casual side. So come out for some really cool commander content, some called uh, excuse me, uh, card altar spotlights. Uh, that's, that's and you have two of the best altars the in the world at this uh, yeah, point, we'll uh, between Christy Nash and Kevin Altered. Uh, just wonderful stuff that they do. Um, excellent. Well, um, I, I hear you're hopefully coming out to GP Vegas. I look forward to seeing you out there if you're able to make it. And thank you so much for doing another wonderful Commander Deck Tech with us here today. Until next time, choose your cards wisely. Thank you so much.